Hey there, I'm KH Guides and I manage KHGuides.com, where I've been working to build the best guides, walkthroughs, and tutorials for the Kingdom Hearts series. But sometimes I get inspired to explore specific elements or properties of the Kingdom Hearts franchise even further. This is the second video in our deep dive series, and this time we're taking a closer look at tech points, one of my favorite things about my favorite game. Tech points were introduced as a game mechanic in the first released Kingdom Hearts game, and sadly, this concept hasn't made a return in any of the series' later titles, at least at the recording of this video. Tech points serve as an alternative way to earn experience points to level up your party members, and sometimes they're used as visual indicators during special situations. When tech points are awarded, the word tech will briefly flash on the screen, along with the number of experience points earned. Oddly enough, the Japanese version of the game features a slight variation to this tech point indicator. Seeing as many of these situations require you to perform an action with precision to earn points, I like to think that the word tech in this context would be short for the word technique, but the only other way I've seen this mechanic referenced in official documentation is technical points, which is close enough. Tech points can be earned in lots of different ways, and this video will feature some of my favorite examples. The most common method to earn tech points is to parry enemy attacks with good timing. This can be done using the attack button or by using the guard button when the guard ability is equipped. I personally prefer the latter option when it's available, as the guard animation gives you a wider window of time to parry incoming attacks. There are plenty of opportunities to earn tech points using this method. Many of the Heartless have at least one attack that can be parried for points, and some of the bosses you face give you a chance to parry as well. Bandits and pirates can have their sword swings parried, and most Heartless that charge or slide into you can be stopped with a well-timed attack or guard. In addition to tech points, parrying attacks like this will often stagger the enemy for a short time, giving you a chance to go on the offensive or heal if you need to. This is especially helpful against quicker enemies like air soldiers. They love to zip toward you to attack and fly away before you can reach them, but if you parry their incoming attacks, it will stop them dead in their tracks. Deflecting a large body's glowing charge attack will cause it to stagger for longer, giving you more time to get behind it and strike. Sometimes tech points are awarded by clearing a special condition, like striking an enemy at a specific moment or by repeating a particular action. One of my favorite examples can happen during the fight against Captain Hook on the deck of his ship in Neverland. Hook's standard sword swing can be parried for 17 tech points. If you manage to parry this attack three times, you'll receive double the amount of points, and you'll get to see this cartoony animation where Hook will wobble in place with his sword. It's a nice callback to a similar gag you can find in the animated film. I had a funny thing happen during one of my live streams where Goofy managed to do this himself. Now typically, parries only award tech points if Sora is the one to parry the attack. But because the doubled points are only awarded after the standard attack is parried three times in a row, it awarded the points for Goofy's deflections. Way to go, Goof! <laughs> yeah! Tech points can also be earned when deflecting incoming projectile attacks. This technique can be used against Waka on Destiny Islands when he throws his blitz balls. You won't have access to the guard ability this early in the game, so you'll have to rely on pressing the attack button with the right timing, which can take some getting used to. I sometimes found that jumping before striking helped improve my timing when striking projectiles this way. Sometimes you're awarded even more tech points when these deflected projectiles strike the enemy that sent them. This technique can be performed against Darkseid during the Dive to Heart sequence at the start of the game. Striking the dark projectiles will net you one tech point, and you'll get two more if they make contact with its head for more damage. It's important to keep in mind that if you want a projectile to be sent back at an enemy, you should lock onto them. Locking onto the enemy that sent out the projectile will usually cause the deflected object to home in on that enemy. Another benefit to sending back projectiles is that it can sometimes daze your target, giving you an opportunity to heal in a pinch or move in to deal more damage. I find this to be particularly fun against fat bandits and bouncy wilds, because deflecting their shots back will send them flying. While Tier 3 Aroga Magic has the ability to automatically deflect many projectiles, you won't be awarded tech points when they hit the barrier. 
You can also earn tech points by casting spells on enemies that have a weakness to a particular type of magic. The most common example can be seen when using magic against these floating elemental heartless. Casting Blizzard on Red Nocturnes will net you tech points and daze them for a short period of time. The same can be done using Fire Magic against Blue Rhapsodies, and Gravity Magic against all varieties of these Heartless. There are similar opportunities with other enemies as well. If you cast the opposing magic spell during one of a defender's magic attacks, you can stagger them and earn some tech points. When the Trickmaster in Wonderland lights its batons, casting Blizzard Magic can put them out, which prevents the Trickmaster from using fire attacks until it lights them again. Gravity Magic can earn you tech points and have some interesting effects on certain enemies, like the White Knight Heartless in Halloween Town. These guys drive me absolutely nuts with their high jump attacks. But if you're able to land a cast of Gravity Magic on them, it will net you some tech points and it prevents them from jumping so high. Casting Gravity Magic on Pot Spiders will instantly defeat them and double the amount of experience earned with the awarded tech points. I guess it makes sense considering ceramics don't often survive a fall. Gravity Magic can also sap tech points and HP orbs out of Search Ghosts. The major downside to pursuing these tech points with Gravity Magic is that it takes a long time to cast, and enemies can move out of range before the spell goes into effect. Another way to earn tech points is to strike a specific location on certain enemies. This can be done as early as the Dark Side fight at the start of the game. After it punches down, jump up its arm and strike its head. Each combo finisher dealt to the head will yield two tech points. Battleship Heartless have several opportunities to earn tech points this way. You can destroy both of its side cannons, its mast, and its stern for tech points and extra money. Destroying these parts prevents them from firing projectiles and from moving as fast or as high. During the fight against Oogie's Manor, you can use Blizzard Magic to destroy a Swinging Lantern for a large amount of tech points, and destroying his necklace with air combos or magic will award you the same amount. Most tech points that are awarded through the methods we've covered so far are set per enemy and situation, and the points are calculated as a percentage of the total experience earned from defeating that enemy. This means you'll usually earn just one or two tech points per action in the early game. But these tech point amounts scale up along with all other enemy stats after completing the first story episode in Hollow Bastion. The tech boost ability increases the amount of tech points earned from enemies, and this multiplier increases with each tech boost ability equipped to Sora. There are four tech boosts you can acquire. Two are learned from leveling up Sora, with one learned earlier in the game depending on your dream weapon selection, and the other at level 81. One is awarded after clearing the time trial for the Phil Cup at Olympus Coliseum, and another is given to you after returning 90 Dalmatian puppies in Traverse Town. With all four tech boosts equipped, you'll earn five times the amount of experience points whenever tech points are awarded, with a few exceptions that we'll cover soon. Tech points also serve as a visual indicator of your performance during challenges against Special Heartless. For the Black Ballad, the tech points awarded show you how many times you've successfully found the real one among the copies. And tech points awarded against the Pink Agaricus indicate how many hits you land while Stop Magic is active. These kind of tech points will not be multiplied with the tech boost ability equipped. Check out our Special Heartless video to find out more about these challenges. While tech points are just a fraction of the experience earned from defeating enemies, they can still be a decent way to earn extra experience to level up your party. If you volley a single rare truffle into the air 100 times, it will net you over 5,000 experience through tech points, and that's just for one of the truffles. This is most easily accomplished on the ship's deck in Neverland. The Rock Titan in the Hades Cup at Olympus Coliseum gives you one tech point for each hit dealt to it and that includes damage from the barrier created by upgraded arrow magic. In the gold match, deflecting the Ice Titan's icicles using guard with all tech boost abilities equipped will net you 125 points per deflection. In researching tech point opportunities for this video, there was one detail in the Japanese Ultimania that really caught my eye. According to this table, Genie Jafar's lava throw attack can be deflected for tech points, 
and it rewards a much higher amount than most tech point scenarios at this point in the game. I tried this out in my HD version of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, but no tech points were awarded for guarding against or striking this boulder. I also tried out different keychains to see if the deflection rating had any effect. In Kingdom Hearts 1, every enemy attack has a recoil value, and each keychain that Sora can equip has a deflection rating. If your deflection rating is equal to or higher than the attack's recoil value, then Sora will recover quickly from the deflection. This allows you to follow up with a counterattack ability, and in some cases, earn tech points. But if the enemy attack's recoil value is higher, Sora will take longer to recover from deflecting the attack. The only keychains available to Sora at this point in the game are the Kingdom Key and Jungle King. And between the two of them, Kingdom Key has the higher deflection rating. But even with the Kingdom Key, the HD version did not yield any tech points from deflecting this attack. I then remembered that the Ultimania was published for the PS2 version of Kingdom Hearts, so I decided to set up my PlayStation 2 and try out my original US copy of Kingdom Hearts 1. I played through the game to reach the end of Agrabah, entered into the Genie Jafar fight, and still this attack would not yield tech points, no matter how I tried to deflect it. I scoured the internet for YouTube Let's Plays and recordings of the Genie Jafar fight, but not a single video could prove that these tech points exist. At this point, I wanted to write it off as a publishing error and call it a day. But it was the only tech point scenario that I could not replicate. And then it hit me. What if it was only possible in the Japanese version of the game? I set up my Japanese PS2 and booted up my original, non-final mix Japanese copy of Kingdom Hearts. I sat through every non-skippable cutscene again, playing through the worlds to the end of Agrabah. I equipped the Kingdom Key, I dropped down from the lamp chamber, and then... Alright, here we go. What? Wait, really? No, no f***ing way! It actually works! Wait, 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 wait. 36 tech points are awarded when deflecting Genie Jafar's lava throw attack but only with the Kingdom Key and only in the original Japanese version of Kingdom Hearts for the PlayStation 2. I really think that tech points are a great feature of the first Kingdom Hearts game. They incentivize players to try different things, add an extra layer of risk and reward to combat, and they serve as a good visual indicator for enemy weaknesses or openings that help you learn where and when to strike. It would be nice to see this mechanic return in future games, Though it would need to be reworked a bit, seeing as parrying attacks with the guard ability has become more of a necessity during tougher encounters. Perhaps in the future, using special techniques that would normally give tech points could instead speed up Sora's MP charge, or give him a separate type of experience that allows him to learn different guard or reprisal abilities. If you want to learn more about tech points, the KH Guide's website has been updated with a new section, featuring a complete list of tech point situations and the experience you can earn from them. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into this really neat gameplay element of Kingdom Hearts. You'll learn some special tech points from me if you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. This video was produced as part of March Caprice. It's a fantastic event organized by the online community to celebrate Kingdom Hearts. Find out more at MarchCaprice.com. Big thanks to our guiding lights and shining beacons on Patreon for their support. You can join us on Patreon to receive lots of community perks, including early access to future videos. You can also find me live streaming on Twitch as I continue to work on new tutorials and walkthroughs. And as always, you can find the best guides and walkthroughs to the Kingdom Hearts series at khguides.com. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.